Hello there, and welcome to our activity, Climate Change for Little Ones. And today we're going to be looking at a book called The Little Helpers. And it's about Penny, a penguin, who tries her best to actually help with the climate change. The Little Helpers. Penny helps protect the polar ice caps. Penny is a penguin. She's a ploppy whoppy penguin. Penny lives in the South Pole and she loves sliding along the ice caps and plopping into the sea. Penny is a very positive penguin. She thinks good things about everything and everyone. Her penguin friends like being around her because she's always laughing. Penny has a twin sister, Pasha, and a brother, Pedro. They all love spending time together, playing on the ice and swimming in the sea. One summer's day, Penny, Pasha and Pedro want to go out to see their friends. Summer in the South Pole means the sun is out a lot, so the weather gets a little bit warmer, even though it still feels extremely cold. The young penguins love splashing around in the sea together and then lying on the ice sunbathing. Before they go out one summer's day, Penny's mum tells them all to be careful. Penny's mum says the South Pole is getting warmer because of climate change. Little bits of ice at the edge of the polar ice caps have been melting away in the heat. Make sure you stay away from the edge of the ice caps when you're sunbathing, she warns them. Penny, Pasha and Pedro waddle off because penguins have feet like fins which make normal walking a bit difficult. They all spend a happy few hours sliding and skidding along the polar ice caps, then diving with a plop into the sea. Living in the South Pole is really fun. When they get tired, Penny, Pasha and Pedro go and find a nice patch of ice to lie down on. Remembering what Penny's mum said, they make sure it's not too close to the edge of the ice cap. Pedro suddenly pulls out a pair of sunglasses and puts them on. Well, what do you think? He says. Penny and Pasha look at him and then at each other before starting to giggle. <laughs> First they giggle a little and then they giggle a lot. Whoever saw a penguin wearing glasses, sunglasses, laughs Penny. The South Pole is freezing. We're cold enough already, chuckles Pasha. The little penguins lie back and enjoy the feeling of the sun on their beaks. As they do, Penny starts to think about the, the mountain ice caps. She thinks it is sad that the place that they live in and play in is starting to disappear. Because she is a very positive penguin, Penny wonders if there is anything they can do to help. Oh, suddenly, she has an idea. Pasha, Pedro, I'll be back in a minute, says Penny, and off she waddles. Penny goes home to find her mum. She asks if she can borrow her sun umbrella, which some people call a parasol. Penguins use sun umbrellas to protect baby penguins from the summer sun. Baby penguins are born with almost no feathers, so their skin is very delicate. Of course you can borrow it, says Penny's mum, but why do you want it? Well, says Penny, you said that heat is melting some of the ice caps. Maybe if we all lie under our sun umbrellas, the heat from the sun won't reach the patch of ice under the umbrella. If we can get all our friends to do the same, then maybe we can protect some of the ice caps from melting. That's a great idea, says Penny's mum. Here's a sun umbrella. Oh, and wait, here's another. We got two because your twin sister Pasha and you were babies at the same time. Thanks, mum, shouted Penny as she waddles off. Mm. 
When Penny gets back to her brother and sister, she explains her idea. Pedro looks down at his feet, which are starting to get sunburned. He thinks Penny has arrived just in time. How about I use one umbrella and Pasha and you share the other because I'm the oldest, said Pedro. Penny and Pasha look at each other again and laugh. <laughs> okay, says Penny, but only if you take those crazy glasses, those crazy sunglasses off once you're under the umbrella. As Penny, Pasha and Pedro settle down under their umbrellas, their friends start to notice. Hey, a penguin called Pilar shouts over, what are you doing? We're helping to protect the polar ice caps from melting, Penny shouts back. Wow, says Pilar, what an amazing idea. I'm going home to get the one we use for my little brother. Before long, there's a large group of penguins surrounding Penny and her brother and sister. All of them are lying under the sun umbrellas and helping to protect their own little patch of polar ice caps from melting. And Pedro, well, he's still wearing his sunglasses because a penguin can never be too cool. I love this story. And what also I love about this book is at the back of the book just here is three questions that you can talk about with your grown-ups and adults. And what the first question is, what is climate change and why is it happening? Another question is, what things can we do to protect the polar ice caps in the South Pole from melting? And the other question is, what are some of the other effects of climate change around the world? That's a great way to start a discussion. So right now, we are going to make our own Penny the Penguin. Let me show you what we did. What we can do. Okay, so what we do need for our Penny the Penguin is we need some blue card. We need a paper plate. One of the small ones, if you can get a hold of it. It roughly measures around 15 centimetres. We need some black card. And on our black card, we need to draw a circle of about 11 centimetres. It doesn't have to be exact. And another circle of around eight centimetres. We also need an orange card or paper Two more circles and one circle about four or five centimetres and the other circle around about two centimetres. We will also need to have some glue, a pencil, a tiny bit of white paper if you don't have a googly eye and of course something to, to mark the googly eye within the middle. Okay. Here we go. The first thing I need to do is to use my paper plate. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it in half and make a really, really good crease down that middle. I'm going to use my fingernails to make that good crease down the middle. If you need to catch up at any time during this video, you can press pause and, and that'll help you to catch up. And now we've got that done, we need to do a black circle. Remember what I said before, I'm about 11 centimetres. I've already drawn mine, but let me show you. All I did was I drew around some tape. I drew around the outside of it, and that gave me a rough measurement of 11 centimetres. And then next time I drew the circle in the middle of the tape, and that was roughly around eight centimetres. And I used a pencil for that because if you use a black pen, of course you wouldn't be able to see it on the black paper. And the pencil's a lot lighter than the black and you'd actually just be able to see it. And then you can cut round it. So I'm going to quickly 
cut down mine. I hope you take a lot more time. I'm going to cut mine in half first and I'm going to cut round a circle. Do you see when I'm cutting round a circle that I'm moving the paper more than the scissors? Because a, a circle is quite tricky and if you move the paper it just helps you. With the scissors sometimes it gets a little bit trickier. That's one of my hot tips. There's one circle. Here comes another circle. This is the other circle, about around about eight centimetres. But once again, it doesn't have to be exact. Just roughly would be a great idea. This is Penny the Penguin's head. And now I'm going to make my other two circles. There's my first circle, which is around about four to five centimetres. And another one around about two centimetres. Okay. Once again, I'm going to move the paper more than my scissors. It's a tricky thing learning how to use scissors when you're very young. And the more practice you get, the better you get at it. There we go, that's my circle. And my tiniest circle so far will be around about two centimetres. That'll be for the beak. Oh, Penny Penguin needs a beat, doesn't she? Okay, that's my circle there. Okay, so what I've got is four circles. I've got two black ones, one bigger than the other, and two orange ones, one bigger than the other. What I'm going to do is take the big black one now, and I'm going to fold that one in half as well, just like we did with the plate. I'm folding it in half and making a nice crease down the middle like that and then I'm going to tuck it behind the plate so tuck, the plate gets tucked into the side of it so both sides of the plate you can see that's going to be penny wings we're not going to push it against the plate we're going to put it slightly on a on a diagonal as there can you see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to glue the back part of that plate so that sticks on the back. I'm pressing it down and actually now I'm going to glue both of those onto our blue card. So I do need to have the glue again and I'm going to glue the back and the white together. What I like about using a plate is that it has a little bit like a beveled edge and it looks like the feathers of a penguin. But if you can't use a plate and you want to use white card that's absolutely fine. And it still looks absolutely fantastic. There we go so far. Now what we need to do is to put the head or penny on the penguin. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to only glue part of it at the bottom there. That's because we're going to want to keep the head upright when, the, when it opens up. Okay, here we go. Pressing it down just slightly. So the glue sticks onto there. So you can see, actually, it still opens up with a head. Okay, so so far we've got a head, we've got a feathery body and we've got her wings. So now we need to make some feet for her, don't we? So if you take the orange circle and you're going to fold that in half as well. And you're going to make a crease down there. With your fingernails again. But this time we're not going to put it on as it is, we're going to cut it right down where we've made a crease. It's the centre of the circle. You should have two halves. Okay. And one of the feet is going to be tucked behind the body there. So we need a little bit of glue just on the curved bit just there. And I'm going to tuck that underneath. And I'm just going to press that down so it's attached to the to the feathery body. And the other foot is going to go in front here but not quite in front of the other foot. You want to see both feet don't we? So I'm just going to put it slight to the left and then need a little bit of glue to make it stick. There we go. Now you can see both feet can't we? When we open it up we can still, still see both feet as well. So we're looking now to put, give Penny a nice beak. So take the other piece of orange and once again we're going to fold it in half. 
and make a crease. And you're just going to leave it like that. You're absolutely leave it like that and what you're going to do is you're going to fold it, you're going to open it up and then just glue it so it folds together permanently like that. Nothing will open it and you're going to put that on Penny's head. Let me tell you how we're going to do it. The straight part of it, the flat part of it is going to be at the bottom and the curved part is going to be at the top and it's going to be tucked behind Penny's head. So we need a little bit of glue on one side just here. I'll do that. I'm going to tuck it behind the head and then press down. And you can see now we've got a little big penny. And the last thing we need, of course, a penny can't see anything without a pair of eyes, can she? You might have a googly eye. I don't have a googly eye. What I do have is a tiny bit of white paper and I've drawn a little circle. Can you see that? There's a circle. And I'm going to just cut around that circle You may need an adult to help you out with this because it's a tiny little circle. And I find the tiny little circles sometimes the trickier they can be. So I'm going to glue that onto Penny's head, just over the beak. And I'm going to take my marker and draw a little circle in the middle. Like that. And there we have it. There is Penny the Penguin. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually put some cotton wool balls at the bottom to make a little bit of a snow effect. That's up to you. I will leave that to me to leave the writer's decision. But it's rather nice, just as the story was about the, the ice caps. That is, this, that is now Penny the Penguin finished. So what we're going to do, I'm going to change the camera over and I'm just going to say goodbye to you. Well, I hope you've had fun reading our little book. The little helpers and creating our penny the penguin as well. I know I've had a lot of fun spending this time with you. I'm sure your art activity is absolutely fantastic as I know it always is. Thank you for spending time with us today. Bye bye.